I can't believe you are gone. Oh, I was shocked and sad when I heard the news. Oh no, if I should cry, me a river mm. or sob softly within me. Oh, I don't know what to do. Let me a moment. If I should smile through the tears, but I'm weeping solitude, oh, I don't know what to do. Hey, my mom, though I know it's better on the other side, and I know it's peaceful in paradise. We are pained, you had to leave us this soon.
We sing the hymn on page three. I know that my redeemer lives. Walk with me. Praise the Lord, O my soul. 
and all that is within me. Praise his holy name. Who forgives all your sin? The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. He will not always be chiding. He has not dealt with us according to our sins. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy over those that fear him. As a father is tender towards his children, so is the Lord tender to those that fear him. The days of man are but as grass, he flourishes like a flower of the field. But the merciful goodness of the Lord endures forever and ever towards those that fear him, and his righteousness up on their children's children. Reverend 
servants and submissive hearts. Speak to us afresh your gracious promises that through patience and the comfort of the scriptures we may have hope and be lifted above the, the, the churches and chances of this world into the light and peace of your presence through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We may be seated. I greet all of you, dear people of God, who have come from far and near to be part of this glorious service of commendation, where we all assemble to build our father, brother, husband, an uncle, Sa Olani Olani Babalola, Ijalai, farewell. We thank everyone for coming and pray that as we have come in peace and safety, you will return to your places of abode safely and in peace. In the name of Jesus. I condole with Mrs. Bola Ijalai. I condole with the children, the grandchildren, the entire Ijalai family. I condole with Mother's Church Bodija and the congregants of the Diocese of Ibadan on this great loss. I also commiserate with Sir Doctor and Mrs. Olumoiwa. Okay. May the good Lord comfort everyone in his own inimitable way in the name of Jesus. And may the Almighty God continue to be our tower of strength and pillar of support in the mighty name of Jesus. Dear people of God, death is an inescapable phenomenon in life. Yes, it is, it is a morbid topic. And that's why we, we hate to discuss it. But obviously, we cannot run away from it. But all of us are running away from it. And that was why Lord Tennyson, the great poet, wrote, No life that breathes with human breath has ever really wished for death. And Shakespeare responded, by saying, yes, it will come when it will come, rich or poor, educated or uneducated, high or low, male or female, young or old, we shall all die. Yes, death, of course, is a leveler. We just have to know that we cannot evade the thought of death. It's not possible. And we cannot evade the fact of death. And Genesis chapter 3 verse 19 is a popular passage. Genesis 3 19 says, In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground for out of it you are taken you are dust and to dust you shall return let 
let's read further. That was uh, Genesis chapter 3, verse 19. Let's read further. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 7. 1 Timothy 6, 7 says, We brought nothing into the world, and it is quite clear that we cannot take anything out either. Let me also take you to Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. We have read that particular passage on a number of occasions. Hebrews 9, 27 says, Just as man is destined to die once and after that, the face of judgment. People fear death. Not only just because of the fact of dying, but because of the mystery surrounding it. And death has been described as the great enigma of life. Humanly speaking, it is an insoluble mystery in the sense that it is the one fact that can be predicted of every man and woman. You may not be able to predict much about me. I may not be able to predict much about you. But for the fact of death, it can be predicted. So to the weary and despondent, death may come as a friend. To the healthy, healthy and ambitious, yes, death may appear as a fool. While the cynical and disillusioned may meet death with indifference. All our plans for the future, yes, are subject to his approval, whether you accept it or not. Yes. A writer, Dr. William Sangster, remarked, there is no headly tie too sacred for death to lose. And Oscar Wilde, a writer, was also a writer, wrote, Yes, one can survive everything nowadays. Except what? Except death. That was a remark of Oscar Wilde. And let me also go further make mention of what John Donne, who lived between 1573 and 1631, said. He was a clergyman and a religious writer. He said, and man's death diminishes me because I am involved in mankind and therefore never sent to know for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for you, yes, the bell tolls for all of us. But surprisingly enough, most people never think about death. Yes. We just want to hold on to life forever. If it's possible, we can ask God to grant us to live on earth for 250 years. Even when you are so frail, you say, how is it possible, Baba, give me the grace to live up to 500 years? Yes, we want to hold on to life forever, if it's possible. They are people of God. After all, what is this life? If I ask you, what is this life? Would you be able to explain to me convincingly what is this life all about? Solomon, with all his wealth and wisdom, said these words about life from his personal experience. Solomon, having lived a righteous life, he ended up seeing the, the, the futility of life and he became more morose and melancholy. Talking about life, it said in Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 2. It's a popular passage. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 2. Meaningless 
meaningless. Says the teacher, utterly meaningless. Everything is meaningless. That's according to NIV. But if you read the New King James Version, the New King James Version puts it thus, vanity of vanities. Says the preacher, vanity of vanities. All is what? All is vanity. Yes, dear people of God, that is our life. That is our life. James chapter 4, verse 14. James 4, 14 says again, Whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow. Yes, that's what James 4, 14 says. Whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow. For what is your life? It is even as vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Let me bring in here that great writer, Shakespeare. What he said in Macbeth. Yeah, in the play Macbeth, and I put out, out, brief candle. Life but a walking shadow. Poor player, they are struts and frets. He's high up on the stage, and then he's hard no more. It is a day torn by an idiot, full of sound and fury. He signifies nothing. As Christians, we should not fear death. Some people are afraid to die with the results that they never begin to live again. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ came into the world to allay our fears about death. By his resurrection, he gave us victory over death and the fear of death is banished. And the wonders of God's love, the people of God, that is God for us. And that is Jesus for us. For a Christian who is regenerated, that is not the end. Yes, that is not the end. It is the beginning of eternal life. And Milton, that great writer, says, Death is the golden key that opens the gate to eternity. Yeah, that was the remark of Milton. To put our mind at rest, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, says in John chapter 14, verses 1 and 3. John 14, verses 1 and 3. Very popular passage. Let not your hearts be what? Let not your heart be what? Be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I want to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, that where I am, there you may be also. The people of God, this were Jesus' words to his disciples. Yes. They are also his words to us today. My father's house in this text refers to heaven. Yes, Jesus has gone there to prepare a place for us. God has a home to which the household of God now on earth will be transferred. Here on earth, we have no continuing city. And we should have known this, but some of us don't know. Yes. And this is confirmed in Hebrews chapter 13, verse, verse 14. Hebrews 13, 14. For us Christians, home is heaven, and heaven is home. That great writer and brilliant Oxford 
professor, C.S. Lewis, once wrote, and I quote, Our Father refreshes us on the journey with some pleasant hymns that is heavenly forms of comfort like cozy houses, slick, states of the art cars. But our fathers will not encourage us to mistake them for our homes. Yes. That was what Professor C.S. Lee said. A missionary tells of his returning by ship to his own country. As he watched people disembark and walk into the hands of their loved ones who were expecting them, this, this man grew somewhat saddened and cold because he realized there was no one to welcome him. Rather, petulantly, he said to the Lord, Why couldn't you arrange? for me to have someone to welcome me home. And the Lord whispered, you are not home yet. You are not home yet. And that was why the hymnist, the hymnist Artos Artelo, who lived between 1807 and 1835, wrote the hymn, I'm a stranger here. Heaven is my home. Hell is a desert prayer. Heaven is my home. Danger and sorrow stand round me on every hand. Heaven is my fatherland. Heaven is my home. Dear people of God, brothers and sisters, does your destination as a child of God show on your face? Yes, I ask again. Does your destination as a child of God show on your face? In Luke chapter 9, verse 53, Jesus' face was set for the journey to Jerusalem. Yes, all of us, you of course, we are not heading for a cross. Jesus did that for us. We are not heading for a cross. But for a crown, already prepared for you. Some things register on our faces every day of our lives. Uh, yes. Anxiety. Surprise. Concern. Anger. Frustration. Intimidation. Disappointment. And, uh, and worry. How wonderful it will, would it be if instead people see in our countenance something of external destination. The beautiful city of God has confirmed in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9 that I has not seen, it's a popular passage, I has not what? Has not seen, nor hear, heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. When our eyes are focused on our future in heaven, then one of the consequences is that material things for which we crave we have the tool appeal for us. And that is the problem we are still having. That is the problem we are still in country. That's still on our journey. Let's look at what is happening in our country today. Yes, most people have their focus on things of the world. And this is why we have corruption all over the place. Scams. Crafts, bribery, kidnapping, killings, even ritual killings. Ritual killings. I don't know why it's only in Nigeria that we so much believe in ritual killings. No, ritual killings is not, is not happening in these developed countries. I don't know whether you've heard about ritual killings in Australia. 
in Finland, in Canada, in the Iceland, I don't know, but African society. And that's the reason why they refer to us as that continent. Are we that? Are we that in Nigeria? Are we? We celebrate corruption in our country. Corruption flows like blood through the, the veins of most of our political leaders and public officers. Yes. I pray that God himself in his infinite goodness and mercy will cleanse our country in Jesus' name. Amen. That 17th century Puritan, Thomas Watson, said, and I want you to listen to it, the world is but a great aim where we are to say a night or two and be gone. What madness is it to set our heart upon our aim as to forget our home? That was what the Moswatsen said. Those who keep heaven in view, yes, retire what the possessions as no more than the furnishing of an inn. After all, we are only saying for the night. Saudi Jalai. Yes, lived an exemplary and completely fulfilled life. He was richly blessed in all ramifications. Richly blessed. Blessed with a good, loving, and caring wife. Sister Bola Jalai. Blessed with grace and promising children and grandchildren. He was the Ibaro, that sang better advisor. He was a bona fide member of Methodist Church here in Bodija. And he was like the father to so many societies, not only here in Bodija, but even in other churches in the Ibaro. As I conclude, in his book, Just Like Jesus, as the name of that book, Just Like Jesus, is written by Max Lucado. And Max Lucado writes, God can no more live your life unchanged than a mother can leave her child's tear untouched. Accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today. Tomorrow may be too late, and your life will never remain the same again. Yes, we have the privilege of being here today in this congregation of sons. And whether we like it or not, the bell will also toil for us. I don't want to stretch my hands. Because if I strike my hands anywhere, some people may want to dodge it. Yes, but the bell tolls. And we toll every time. Yes. We had a birthday service, 95th birthday service, for one of our elders in the church. And myself and Barrister Ali Jalayu were in that service. That was on Wednesday. I think it was on 14th, uh, 14th um, August. And I was saying, ah, I would not be going to a kitty, a lower delta. And I said, yeah, oh, well, it's in the diagnosis of the meaning. I said, I uh, don't worry. Where will we be going? We'll go together. Go with you. I will be with you. He said that on Wednesday, 14th August. And he died on Monday. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. How many days? How many days? Let's bow our heads and our hearts in prayer. Let's bow our heads and our hearts in prayer. 
most merciful Father, who have been pleased to take unto yourself the soul of your son, Sir Maristani Jalai. Grant unto us who are still on our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith, that having served you with constancy on earth, we may be joined hereafter with your blessings in glory everlasting through Jesus Christ our Lord. You may be seated. Gracious God, we thank you in the many ways that our landing on Lanley and Papalola in Jalai, KJW, has enriched our lives. The ways he has brought happiness to many that has earned him our love and respect. Now that he is no more, our sorrow is deep and our loss genuine. But most of all, we thank you that our confidence, our hope, and our trust rest completely now in your love. We believe that Saonani Onaleye Babalola Ijalai KJW has run the race and kept the faith and is now with you and all your people in your heavenly kingdom. Watch over Saonani Olale Babalola Ijalai and bless him. Until that time where we shall meet again and live together in the light of your everlasting love through Jesus Christ our Lord. And this time we will take the wire rendition.
all for your well wishes, your support at this time. The outpouring of love um, is unbelievable and we truly appreciate you all. Our Father was heavily invested in the advancement of the Kingdom of God. Um, prior to his passing, he wanted to donate towards the building that's being built of us. Um, in his memory and um, to further up in continuation of his works, um, we the children um, would like will be donating two million naira towards the building. Father, 
by your mighty power, you gave us life. And in your love, you have given us new life in Christ Jesus. We entrust our Father, Sir Barrister Olani Jalai, KJW, to your merciful keeping. In the faith of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who died and rose again to save us, and is now alive and raised with you, and the Holy Spirit in glory forever. And may, your, may God in his infinite love and mercy bring the whole church living and departed in the Lord Jesus to a joyful resurrection and fulfillment of his eternal kingdom. Amen. And now, may the God of peace Our Lord Jesus, the good shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, make you great in every good, so that you may do his way, walking among us that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen.